y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. Today, we are making a holiday side dish that I am sure you're gonna love. It's uh, sweet potatoes with cranberries and pecans and pineapple. It's not too sweet, so if you're tired of that marshmallowy, praline kind of sweet potato dish at Thanksgiving, then this is for you. You can make these with either canned yams or sweet potatoes or fresh sweet potatoes or yams. Either way, it doesn't really matter. They just need to be cooked. If you're using the canned ones, be sure to drain them before you use them, okay? Which I haven't drained these yet, but I will. Um, personally, for this recipe, canned is fine. Save yourself some time. No reason not to, okay? Um, you're going to need pineapple rings in juice, and you're going to also drain the juice off of this. Save the juice for something else. Personally, I'm going to save this juice for a margarita later, so there's that. Butter, melted. You're going to need a half cup. And in the recipe, it just calls for half a cup of melted butter, but I've gone ahead and browned this because I wanted to use brown butter in it. It gives it a little richer taste. Um, and so either way is fine. You can use just melted butter in this or you can use melted and browned butter in this. I've used salted butter, but if you have unsalted butter, that's fine too. Um, dried cranberries, pecans, brown sugar, cinnamon, and two eggs. That is it. This is so simple. It's gonna take about five minutes to prep and 20 minutes to bake. And um, you can prep this ahead of time and keep it in your fridge for say two days and then bake it right um, as like your turkey or ham comes out of the oven on Thanksgiving. You can pop it right in there and um, it will be baked by the time the turkey has rested and is ready to slice and serve. The first thing we're gonna do is whip the cooked and drained yams with the eggs and butter. You can put them all in at once, but one of the things that I like to do is just get them a little bit mashed up before I go and add the rest of the stuff. So I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna get this off the sides before I add anything else. I'm telling y'all, this is the easiest. I'm gonna add the eggs, and you can beat them ahead of time, but since we're working with cold, cook, you know, cold cooked yams, um, and we're whipping it anyway, I don't bother to beat them ahead of time. So we'll just add the one. and turn it back on. And I'm gonna scrape down the sides. And now I'm gonna add one fourth a cup of our brown butter. smooth and creamy so be sure to scrape down the sides every once in a while to make sure that you get all of it. It doesn't take very long to do. All right, that's about all that needs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little taste and see if I want to add a little bit of salt or a little bit of pepper. You will notice that no sugar went into this. This is not super sweet. If you would like it to be a little bit more sweet, then add a tablespoon of brown sugar, taste it. If it's not sweet enough, add a little bit more. You may want to add a little bit of salt. You may want to add a little bit of pepper. I think I'm going to add some salt to that and just a touch of brown sugar, um, but they're also not as creamy as I would like them. If when you taste it, you're still feeling lumps of uh, sweet potato in it, you haven't creamed enough. You want this to be completely whipped. All right, let's 
see what we've got. Okay. Now we don't even need the mixer anymore. All right, we're gonna spray a one and a half cup, I mean a one and a half quart, and I think that's about six cups um, casserole dish with nonstick cooking spray. So we're gonna spray that really well and then put our sweet potatoes in there. I like these rover spatulas because you can get every single bit and nothing goes to waste. We're just going to smooth that out. You could actually probably put, uh, use a one quart baking dish for this. Be, you just have to make sure that you have enough room on top for the layer that goes on top. It depends on how full you like it to be. Usually for the blog, for pictures, we like the casserole dishes to be like super full and overflowing because they look better that way. But for serving at your house, um, if you don't want spillovers in the oven, I'd go with like a one and a half quart should be just right. Now we're gonna just top with the pineapple rings. And remember, you don't need any juice. You can have drained this if you want to. I um, obviously haven't. Right? If how many pineapple rings go on there is going to depend on the shape of your casserole dish. Um, I can usually, like with a square or an oblong, uh, rectangular casserole dish, I can usually get most of them on there, but you want them to be pretty and not look uh, crowded. So six it is. Now we're going to sprinkle the cranberries and the pecans over the top. And this calls for a quarter cup of cranberries and a quarter cup of chopped pecans. I actually use a little bit more than that because we like them. Also, hold some extra cranberries out because what happens is while the cranberries are in the oven, they kind of bake and they turn brown and they lose this pretty red color that they have. Um, and so if you'll save some out to sprinkle on top when they come out of the oven, the heat of the dish will warm them up, but they'll still be a pretty color, okay? That's just the way I like it. Um, if you don't care, then don't worry about it. But I like to have some color in the dish and doing it that way makes sure that happens. Once you do that, you're gonna take your brown sugar and sprinkle that over the top. This is so good, y'all. And it's not super sweet despite the brown sugar because the uh, sweet potatoes don't have really any in there. Get that cover in the top. And then we're gonna take the browned butter or the melted butter and the cinnamon and mix those together. Take my little whisk here and give that a good mix or a bad mix, whatever. I don't know why you say that, you know, I'm gonna give that a good mix. Well, it's not like you're gonna give it a bad mix. Okay. And then we're just gonna drizzle this right over the top. Get all of it in there. Doesn't that look good? Okay. You're gonna to wanna to take a paper towel and just wipe around the sides. I pretty much made a bigger mess than I had. I pretty much always forget to do that, but it makes it so much prettier when it comes out of the oven and it doesn't have burnt on stuff all around the edges of it, right? And that's it. We just take this, we're gonna put it in the uh, 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes to heat through and for this to get a little crispy on top. And then um, we'll be ready to eat. Okay, y'all, it just came out of the oven uh, a few minutes ago, I let it set. Um, and it smells amazing in here. So let's get a little bit of it and give it a try. 
All right, now, um, this smells so good. And we'll spoon that out, put it on the, on the plate. We've got our sweet potatoes, the cranberries, the um, pecans, the pineapple, all together, that should make one super delicious holiday bite. Definitely want to get some cranberry in there. This is so different. So good. Well, y'all, here it is. It's so delicious. And it is more of an adult kind of sweet potato since it's not like sugary dessert sweet. But the pineapple comes through, the, um, the tropical flavor of that has soaked down through the sweet potatoes. The pecans are so buttery. It is so good. I hope you're gonna try it. Um, go ahead and try it like this week or something. Test it out and see how it works for you. And uh, if not, I definitely have the old timey kind of sweet potatoes on the blog. I've got like two or three different recipes. So, I hope you like it. I hope you're going to try it. Hope you'll come back next week. And um, yeah, that that's it for today. I love y'all. And I will talk to y'all later, okay? Hey, Amy and Decky, I miss you. I had a really good time this weekend with you. Love you.